Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Brian here. Hope you guys are doing okay. Today we're gonna to be reacting to episode 11 of Kin Porsche. Sorry, this is a little bit delayed. I have been away for the weekend. Again, I was in Palm Springs once again this past weekend. And on top of that, I have been extremely busy with school. As always, thank you guys for being so understanding and being so patient. And a few of you did reach out to me asking me when my reaction to episode 11 was gonna come out. So thank you for reaching out. I appreciate that. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. You have the comment section or some of you do utilize Instagram and send me messages there. Instagram is the quickest way to get to me because I'm always on Instagram. YouTube doesn't really give me notifications right away. But either way, it'll get to me eventually. So thank you so much for just being patient and being so understanding. I really appreciate that. Anyway, episode 10 was just a lot in a good way, you know what I'm saying? Like it was just so much that went down but everything was so purposely executed and everything was just done so well, you know? I don't know how they do it but it could have easily just been a convoluted mess but it flowed perfectly for me. So I can't wait how episode 11 is going to follow that. That's a big shoot or fail, but knowing Kim Porsche and their track record, I'm not worried. Really quickly though, in episode 10, a few of you were wondering why I reacted the way I did during the mirror scene with Vegas and Tawan. And to be honest, for a while, I wasn't really exactly sure why I got so emotional. I felt bad for them. That was the first instinct that they had to feel like they have to be accomplished before they get hopefully accepted by their dad or Vegas in particular. So that was my initial reaction. But I watched my reaction a few days later and I watched that particular scene, that part of my reaction, because that part of the reaction is the part where I get the most questions about. So I'm like, why did I react the way I did? And it took me a while to really understand what triggered that. And when I was about 11 or 12, I remember a very close family member of mine. I'm not gonna name names because I have a lot of family members that are subscribed to this channel. And <laughs> But anyway, I remember being told by a family member that they loved me even if I was like this. That got me thinking, what do you mean like this? Implying basically that there's something defective about me, or at least that's how I took it and that's how I was made to feel. They love me, but they would have loved me more if I wasn't different, if I wasn't that. Because the way it was said to me was, I love you even though you're like that. So that's one moment that I could refer back to that really made me feel like, oh my God, I could see myself in Vegas in that mirror scene because that point in my life, I really took that personally and I really carried that with me for years to come. I would always go back to that moment and think I'm not enough. And I felt like in order for me to deserve their love, I had to compensate for the defect that I was told I had. I was trying to compensate by being very harsh on myself and not allowing myself to make mistakes because there's no room for mistakes. And I really felt like I had to be accomplished and be somebody that they hopefully would be proud of before I can even come out to them and hopefully they'll accept me. So in my mind, I really, my ultimate goal was for many, many years, and that was said to me when I was 11 or 12, I took that with me and I told myself throughout the years, I need to get a degree in college because I was the first person to graduate and get a bachelor's degree in my family. So I saw that as a huge goal that hopefully they would be proud of me, you know? So I told myself, I'm not gonna come out until I have something that hopefully they'd be proud of. So, which was get a bachelor's degree and that I did. And then I graduated and got my degree and I felt very accomplished, but I, I didn't think it was enough. I felt like I had to get a decent job that would be able to sustain my lifestyle and be able to you know, pay my bills so that I won't have to rely on them. Only then, hopefully they would be proud of me. Hopefully I would be enough for them. And that's really what I did. I went to school, got a degree in college and then got a good, a decent job. And that's when I said, okay, I think it's time. Like, I don't know how, what else they want in my mind. I'm like, I don't know what else they would want from me. So shouldn't this be enough? And then that's when I 
came out. And that's a lot of stress to put on somebody to make them feel like they're not enough. So when Vegas was talking to Tawan during that mirror scene, hoping to become a leader one day, and maybe hopefully by then his dad would accept him, I really related to that. I felt like that was me because I went through that. Not exactly the same situation, but very similar in, in nature. So yeah, that's why I got emotional. That's why I cried because I felt that. I felt that pain. So if you ever in that situation when you feel like you're made to believe that you're not enough, just stop it because the only person that should know your worth is you. And don't depend on other people to dictate what you're worth. Don't allow other people or even family members to dictate what enough is for you. That's your call that's for you to decide so and obviously it goes without saying if you're a parent or a guardian who are doing what this family member was doing to me don't do that <laughs> because had i not heard that from this family member i felt like i would have been more open to taking risks and open to experiencing new things and open to allowing myself to make mistakes because i missed out on a lot of things because i was afraid that it was gonna contribute to the defect that i thought i had anyway so that's my lengthy explanation sorry it was too long but i felt like i had to share it because i think it's very important enough of that enough about me guys thank you so much for being here again and thank you for your time before we start don't forget to like this video subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss my next video let's not waste any more time let's go ahead and start So selfish. Oh my god, we're gonna see a whole lot of them today. What are you doing? Exactly. What does it say? Oh, legacy is so rich and honest. What a lot of bullshit. Oh my god. Hey. <laughs> what do you mean clean up this mess? I'm 
I'm so stressed out. What's your next move, Vegas? Oh, sh <sighs> you're scaring me. He's finally found his match. So what are we gonna do? Like, are we running away? What are we doing? I need more. Meanwhile, they're so happy now. Oh, that's right. She appeared. Yeah, I didn't catch that. I'm like, who, what was he talking about? But a lot of you did say he forgot about Pete. <laughs> also, it was him texting. That's terrible Look how close his face is. He's so. Oh my god. Vegas, I can't with you right now. Oh, this is such a good scene. Oh my god, I'm getting goosebumps. Wow. Fucking Vegas. Pete. I'm scared. He's gonna take him. Something's wrong with him. What you wish for Vegas. Oh my god, I'm scared for Vegas now. <laughs> oh, that's such a good exchange. Sorry. 
ครับยายไอ้พี่มาถึงบ้านแล้วใช่ไหมครับเห็นโทรหามันไม่ติดเลยอ๋อขอบคุณครับยายรักษาสุขภาพด้วยนะครับยายบอกว่าไอ้พี่ถึงบ้านแล้วฮะก็ดีแล้วให้พาบ้านมันน่าคงเหนื่อยจริงอ่ะมึงมีอะไรวะถึงขนาดเรียกผู้ชุมดวงอ่ะกูอยากคุยเรื่องพอสกูรักมันเอ๊ะจบไหม I was not ready for that <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't believe he just revealed that to his family. That's amazing. Now everyone else. This is so weird. <laughs> Oh God. That's like an interrogation. <laughs> I can't. Shut up. Oh. Mm -hmm. Doesn't like. I knew it. I knew he was going to have the brother stay there. Shut the hell up. Y'all going to get shot. Y'all going to get back to work. That's so cute. That's such a cool shot. That's such a cool shot, and the music, and the safe. Oh, this is a safe house, right? It's so secluded. It's in its own island. Somebody must be hungry. All right. So cute. Does he have him chained up? He does. He enjoys this. Next, huh? Poor Pete. In a bowl like that? That's so degrading. Wow, they're so committed. His laugh! He's giving me major Joker vibe.
แดกทั้งหมดนะมึงยูสเกียร์ดมีลักที่สวิชเชสจากดับเบิลผู้ร้ายไปที่สุดเจ้าของมนุษย์ไม่ใช่ผู้ชายที่ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ทำได้ Oh God! All right. Okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll need to have other people audition for this gig. He's like, "What the hell are we doing here?" This must be. One of you pointed this out that this must be a lot to take in. For Porsche, just discovering all these new things that his brother got himself involved in. And now he's in it too. He's really attached to his older brother. Both of them are. Attached to each other, I love their relationship. Oh. <laughs> Still a baby. Such a tender moment between the two of them. Meanwhile. Exactly how to unbuckle these. He must be so weak. So peaceful. Oh, yeah. oh, I spoke too soon. He's always getting slapped by his dad. He's so harsh on him. Oh my God. <sighs> Nothing's ever good enough for you. 
What a terrible thing to say. Seeing him treat Vegas the way he does it really gives you a glimpse of why Vegas turned out the way he did. You know, and I feel like, especially what he said about you know Vegas and Macau not being like worthy enough to be his son or something like that. I feel like it's not even about Vegas and Macau. I think it's about their dad not feeling good enough compared to his brother, Mr. Korn. And he's taking it out on his sons because he could never be like Mr. Khan. And he's constantly trying to compare himself to Mr. Khan. He's, he's constantly trying to compare his kids to Mr. Khan's kids. And to him, whatever his kids do is never going to be as good as Mr. Khan's kids because he himself doesn't feel like he's up there with Mr. Khan. I feel. He's terrible. So moments like these make me really feel bad for Vegas because he's always trying to find ways to impress his dad, always looks to, you know, get his approval. And whatever he does is never going to be good enough. And now he's going to take it out on him. Right? Like as terrible as Vegas is, you well, at least for me, I feel bad for him. Get up and laugh at me. Because he expects that. He expects people to laugh at his failures. <gasps> Pete. Oh my god. Oh my god. His wounds look... Take him to the hospital. How do you expect him to get up? Dude, you f***ed him up. Oh, that's right, his brother. He doesn't know about... Kim being related to him. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh yeah, he didn't know because he was passed out. I love that photo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh no, how is this gonna change the way he sees him? So now you're taking care of him because you f***ed him up. Also now you wanna give him medicine. <laughs> I can't with you, Vegas. Why do you think that is?
Poor Pete, he must be in so much pain. You're never gonna be satisfied because your dad's never satisfied with you. This is a never ending cycle. What did happen to you? Well, we kind of already saw it. Oh, he internalized that. Because you that's what you are made to believe by your dad. Exactly. You don't know that. Right. What did I just say? Because they suck. Yeah. Psh, mind blown. It's gonna be hard to reframe your mindset after hearing that. He might have just injected some real dosage of reality in him. And he's like trying to process it. Oh my god. Oh no! I love that jacket. Don't do this to me today. Don't break his heart. He really gave his all and allowed himself to be vulnerable and, you know, shared his genuine feelings to him and just to not get that in return. I can't even imagine. Meanwhile, <laughs> I love the contrasting scenes that they give us, you know. It's always the complete 180 of the previous scene. It feels like this is their honeymoon stage.
and I don't even know what stage we're in <laughs> with these two. Now he's wearing pajamas. Your wounds are not gonna heal if you're not eating. And that ain't gonna do much. Those leaves, you need more nutritious food than that. Oh, he's gonna feed him, isn't he? Oh no, okay. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused with them, honestly. I'm so confused with Pete and Vegas. Is he alright? Yeah, <laughs> you alright? Excuse me? What? <laughs> okay, we're gonna pretend like that didn't happen. Holy sh... ไปเป็นเอาใส่ไปถ้าผมเดานะมันก็จะเป็นค่าจ้างให้หนูไม่ได้มีคนความจำเสียงเลยไรท์คุณต้องการอะไรไอ้อุ๊ฟก็ให้
And to me, it really boils down to Gunn or Vegas' dad's insecurities towards his brother, towards Mr. Cohn. I feel like Vegas' dad doesn't feel like he's ever going to be as good as his brother. And no matter what he does or no matter how hard he tries, somehow his brother, Mr. Cohn, will always have the upper hand. Seeing how he treats Vegas got me thinking. I wonder if similar situation has happened to him and his brother, Mr. Cohn, when they were little. I wonder if their dad somehow favored Mr. Cohn over Gunn, which eventually made Gunn feel inferior towards his brother, Mr. Cohn. And maybe that feeling of insecurity got so severe enough that it turned into resentment towards Mr. Cohn, maybe. This is just all my speculations, my interpretation of this episode, I could be completely off and that's all right. <laughs> so anyways, resentment towards his brother, Mr. Cohn, got so severe enough that he drove him to really groom his sons, or Vegas in particular, to be somehow better than Mr. Cohn's son. So maybe he can turn around and tell his brother, Mr. Cohn, you may have been better than me in many aspects, but Look at me now, I'm able to raise my boys, my sons, to be tougher than your sons. Therefore, they're better leaders and therefore, I'm better than you because this is what I'm able to do with my sons versus your weak sons. Maybe. Maybe that's how he sees things, possibly. And again, just seeing the way Gunn treats his son Vegas, it's so heartbreaking. You just see the lack of nurturing and the lack of warmth elements within his parenting style. And, and that really became evident when you see them interact with each other, especially when Gunn is upset. He has no problem physically assaulting his son and just slapping him and humiliating him in front of his people. And what's even worse is that he has no problem verbally abusing his sons too. I mean, forget about the physical injuries. The wounds will heal, the bruises will heal in days, maybe weeks but verbal abuse can have such a long-lasting effect on people, especially if it's coming from people that you thought was supposed to be protecting you, who's supposed to be taking care of you, who's supposed to be loving you, like your parent. When a child hears negative feedback like that and just straight up verbal abuse, that will stay with them for a long time. It may not go away. Imagine being told, you're not good enough or you're not worthy enough to be my son. Can you imagine? That's horrible. Imagine hearing those hurtful words coming from your parents. Something tells me that this is not the first time that he's done this to his son. Vegas even mentioned it here. He said something like, I got beat up this time, but it didn't hurt as bad. That's not okay. Like that's not something that you should be used to. Because the more you hear those words, the more you internalize them, the more you believe them, especially if it's coming from the people that you're supposed to trust. Maybe I deserve it. Maybe I am dumb. Maybe dad is right. It'll mess somebody up. It'll mess you up. And that's how Vegas turned out the way he is because of his dad. To me, Mr. Gunn is just a coward person. He doesn't take responsibilities for his actions. He doesn't take responsibilities for his own mistakes. He uses his son, Vegas, as a vehicle to really carry out his dirty work. And if Vegas messes up or if Vegas doesn't live up to his expectations, then he doesn't get to blame himself. He blames Vegas, even though that was his plan all along. He just used his son as a vehicle because he's so afraid to make mistakes and get blamed for it. It almost feels like a deflection tactic. And again, Vegas just doesn't feel like anything that he ever does is ever going to be good enough for his dad. And yet he still continues to crave his father's approval, which probably explains why Vegas is able to just casually commit some of the most sadistic and some of the most violent acts. Maybe because he didn't have a father that would tell him, don't do that, that's not okay, we don't do stuff like that. Or maybe because he constantly feels like whatever he does isn't good enough. So Vegas keeps pushing the limit, pushing the boundaries, pushing certain buttons, thinking maybe if I did this, my dad would respect me. Maybe if I did this, which is worse than what I did before, maybe this time he'll praise me. My dad would think that I am actually tough. Therefore, I'm enough. 
maybe. I don't know. Vegas grew up in such an abusive household that it's hard for me not to feel bad for him. This is not to say that I agree with what Vegas has done. I mean, he's done some terrible stuff. There's no excuse for that at all. After all, he's an adult and he has the capacity and understanding to break the cycle of this violent behavior. But I can imagine it being a lot harder because it's all he's ever known. This is his comfort zone. This is what he's been conditioned to do. And then Vegas's tendency to seemingly find joy in torturing people. I feel like that's his way to feel like he's somehow in control of something because everything else is controlled by his dad. This is maybe his way of creating that pocket space where he is able to call the shots. You don't get to eat until I tell you to eat or I tell you what kind of food you should eat. You know, that kind of stuff. And being able to make that decision, however minor that is, for somebody who does not have a lot of control over anything like Vegas, that's a lot. I can imagine that being empowering for him. And it's just a sad thing to see. Vegas is a sad soul, sad, lonely, lost soul. And I can't blame him 100% for that. He goes back to how his dad really conditioned him and raised him not to be loved, but almost to be weaponized, to be utilized to get back at his brother, Mr. Cohen. Poor Vegas. And Vegas and Pete, Although I was expecting some of the events that took place to take place between the two of them, but I was pleasantly surprised by that one particular scene where Vegas and Pete talked about similar situations when Pete in particular shared his past with Vegas and how it really wasn't about them that their fathers treated them horribly. It really was about their fathers not being able to live up to the expectations that they place on themselves and on top of that, them not being able to take responsibilities for their own failures instead of blaming their sons for their failures. Essentially setting up their sons for failures and that's not fair. You know, kind of like how the saying goes, everybody is a genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, then it'll live its life believing that it is stupid. And I kind of saw a little bit of that in Vegas here when he said that, oh, I deserved it or I'm used to it. I'm used to the beating. I'm used to the verbal abuse. I deserve it. He really internalized that, you know, that's something that's been said to him so many times over and over again by an influential person in his life, meaning his dad. So it's just uh, terrible. I really feel bad for Vegas. Again, still a terrible person but I feel bad for him at the same time and it feels like Pete may have gotten through Vegas a little bit there I don't know who knows actually I actually don't know because it's hard to gauge Vegas because he's so volatile and unpredictable and manipulative so I don't know if the way he's responding to Pete here was genuine. I guess we'll see more about that or more about them in general in the next episode. And then Kim and Porsche, oh my God, that's so heartbreaking to see Porsche break down the way he did. It was so hard to watch because, you know, he's so precious to all of us. You know, he's our baby, essentially. He's the youngest one of this entire crew and to see him get his heart broken that way was just, really hard to see. So he finally discovered that Kim is part of the major family, the same family that his brother is now involved in and it's hard for him to process. And on top of that, Porsche found out that Kim has known all along that he's the brother of Porsche. And to make things worse, Kim basically told Porsche that because he is Porsche's brother and he needs more information, that that was the only reason he agreed to tutor Porsche. <laughs> I don't by that. Yeah, I think it's BS. Maybe initially that was his purpose. In order to get more information about Porsche, he needed to connect with his brother Porsche. That was the initial plan, but what he didn't anticipate was how he ended up developing feelings for Porsche. So when Porsche asked him if he's ever loved him, he replied by saying, I'm sorry. Not a no, but I'm sorry. Understandably, that devastated Porsche. You know, he's young, he's naive, his in love. This is probably his first heartbreak. So seeing him go through that is just difficult to watch because you know, that's Porsche. He's precious to all of us. So to see him be hurt like that, it's just ah, so heartbreaking. And then it seems like Kim is now back on the investigation. I'm assuming he picked up where Big left off because I, if I remember correctly, he assigned Big to dig deeper into that accident, what really took place that day or that night. But since we lost Big in the last episode, he still wanted to resume 
the investigation to get to the bottom of this. And he was able to track down, I think, a policeman that was involved in the actual case and conveniently now has Alzheimer's disease. And knowing how nosy Kim is, he didn't show up to this man's workplace empty-handed. He had a photo of his daughter to kind of use against him. Sure enough, he was eventually able to make him talk and told him that it was Mr. Korn who ordered information to be deleted or to be erased pertaining to that investigation, pertaining to that accident. So which begs the questions, what is Mr. Korn hiding? What was his role in this accident? What was his relationship with Porsche's parent? Or better yet, What's his relationship with Porsche? And with Porsche for that matter. So, hmm, I don't know. I need more info, I need more context. Mr. Cohen, what are you hiding, right? What's your take on that? And then Ken and Porsche, for the majority of the episode, basically took a break from the chaos and they're literally just spending time together. I mean, doing some funny stuff in the helicopter and just living their best lives. I mean, <laughs> I'm not mad at them, I mean, Go ahead. And I love that Mr. Cohn was so accepting of their relationship, which makes him, again, better than Gunn because he's a protective and loving father at the same time. And he trusts his son, unlike Gunn, unfortunately. And then it looks like next episode, we're gonna see even more of Pete and Vegas. I'm so excited. Now that they were able to have that talk, maybe Pete did get through Vegas somehow a little bit because the preview makes it seem like he's no longer chained up and he's fully clothed and unleashed essentially and was being asked by Vegas to let it out. Let what out? I don't think you're ready for that Vegas. I think next episode is gonna be leaning towards Pete because we saw a whole lot of Vegas in this episode being the aggressor. So I wonder how Pete is going to respond to that given their history and given the talk that they've had. I am low-key afraid for Vegas because from what I'm hearing from you guys' knowledge about Pete in the novel, let's just say that Pete is capable. I'm gonna leave it at that because I really don't know what to expect. But if what you're telling me is true, I am low-key afraid for Vegas, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you so much for being here and thank you for your time. Thank you for being so patient. Thank you for being understanding of my schedule. And just know that I appreciate our time together and I appreciate you being here with me and just interacting with me and just being here, period. Even if you're not saying anything in the comment section, that's completely fine. The fact that you're here, that's enough for me. And I just enjoy our time together together you know life is short and life is precious so for those of you who have been following me and my friend Matthew you guys probably know that he has recently passed and Matthew was somebody who I considered as my friend here on YouTube because we've been talking for over a year now you know commenting on each other's posts giving each other tips on how to improve our reaction he really was there for me when we were both starting out on YouTube and as YouTube reactors. So he was so kind and he was so generous. And back in April, when I went to go see BTS in Vegas, he was actually there the week prior. And he was messaging me and telling me that he had extra tickets that he was willing to give me. I was like, four BTS tickets? But I had to turn him down because I already had tickets. But that's just the type of person that he was. You know, he was generous, he was kind. So to hear the sad news that he has left us was very very difficult, especially because I intended to reach out to him a few days before I found out that he's gone. But I hesitated. I knew that he was trying to re recover from health complications and I didn't want to bother him. So I didn't send a message to see how he's doing, which I should have. So hopefully, Matthew, if you're listening, just know that you are extremely missed and your absence is felt and people are looking for you and uh, people are going to miss you and I will miss you and um, I hope that wherever you are you are no longer suffering and I hope that you keep watching our reaction videos <laughs> and judging us and uh, thank you for being a good friend. Alright guys, that is it for us today. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for your time. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss my next video. Until then, I will see you 